Are you tired of constantly setting up and tearing down your YouTube setup? Or maybe you have like three different stands, one for your tripod, one for your lights, and one for your microphone, and you're just tired of all the clutter and mess, and you want a solution with one stand that holds it all that you can roll into the corner of your room or closet when you're not using it, and it's ready to go on wheels when you need to record a YouTube video. Well, today, say goodbye to clutter and say hello to streamlined YouTube content. Let's get into it. Wow! What's up guys, if you're new here, my name is Paul and I run a channel that inspires other creators that your future is whatever you make it. I do that through gear reviews, tutorials, and today I've got this wonderful all-in-one stand that I'm gonna kind of go over the build and so that you can build your own and you can even modify it to kind of make it fit your setup. Um, this one fits mine, but there could be some things that you could add or subtract to fit your setup perfectly. So uh, that's what we're going over here today. This thing has completely changed my life. I love it. My wife was initially like, oh my gosh, you're gonna get another big bulky stand in there. And then she was excited to know that this stand pretty much replaced my whole like all-in-one desk setup, like where I had like the light and the boom arm and like all that on my actual desk. The only thing that I left on there was my camera mount so that goes behind my monitor, but you can't see that because it kind of hides behind my uh, monitor. I use this setup and I just roll it in the corner next to my desk so then I can have either like an off angled camera angle and the one right above my monitor. And then I have the lights and I can use this audio solution or I can use my Rodecaster Pro at my desk. The thing I love about this setup is it's so versatile. You could use it everywhere in your studio and kind of use some things or not use some things depending on what your shot is. And you have one stand that you kind of roll around. This is pretty much my only light stand that I'm using right now. I am working on getting my very pole set up, set up and when I get that done, I probably will do a video on it because I, I love those very poles. But anyways, this setup is super awesome. I got it from obviously DSLR Video Shooter. He does a lot of great videos and content and a lot of the things I'll be referencing is kind of coming from his video. So I'll leave a link to that video below. There's also another video, which is how I set up my sandbags. And that is, I'll just reference that to you. And, and cause I, I, he can do a better job of explaining how he wrapped the Velcro around the bottom of the legs. This thing literally doesn't go anywhere. I can roll it all the way around and those sandbags stay on, on the bottom. So reference that video for, for how to install. The, the key things that you're gonna need to have for this build is an impact rolling sand. There are other brands that make rolling sands. I just find that the impact, the wheels are great. The build is nice, so if you want to take it to go, the bottom legs just fold up really easily. I've, I've even like folded this up with stuff on it and just chucked it in the back of my car, uh, you know, and just add the sandbags back on when I got to my client shoot. Uh, I kind of stay away from moving this thing around now, but it's it's still cool. It's, it's, it, it folds up nicely. The wheels are great. The wheels locks are, are very nice. The um, the stand comes in like two different sizes. Uh, there's like a really tall one and like, I think it's like a 11 foot one and an eight foot one. I have the eight foot one. My ceilings are really small. I never even get it up that high. It is nice because it has, you know, these two different levels that you can adjust. So you want to put your camera gear as low as you would want to put it and then crank it up to be as high as, you know, kind of you figure out how you want to set your setup up. The sandbags, which I just make my own, it's cheaper. You can buy them pre-filled, but I just got these cheap Amazon sandbags that they have two zippers, one to put the sandbag in and then one to even zip it in case any sand falls out. One pro tip to that is I just went to Lowe's, bought a bag of play sand, it's really cheap. Um, and then I just filled the sand myself and put the sand in Ziploc baggies and then put the Ziploc baggies in the sandbag. So there's now there's like three layers of protection for my sandbags. I'm not worried about sand falling out. I've never had sand fall out. So I like making my own. It's cheaper that way and uh, it's great. And some other things that you're gonna need for this project is a grip arm, a grip head, a vice grip that's six inches made from impact. You're going to need some sort of a magic arm. You're gonna need a super clamp and a extension 
rod that impact makes six inches uh, you're going to need a ball head and then obviously you're going to need some sort of a lighting solution i'm using the aperture 60d because it's a nice small light with a light dome mini 2 softbox but i used to use a falcon eyes and it worked fantastic for this setup as well last but not least some sort of a boom arm for your microphone i use just a cheap amazon one but i did use uh like a blue one i didn't like how it moved a little bit so i i could have switched to a road but i was going the cheaper route and going with just the amazon one and it works great it's not super big it doesn't take up a lot of room so that one i, I like it for my my particular setup i use the uh road ntg5 going into the sony k3m however you can use whatever audio solution you want so you could you know get uh, the NTG video mic and go in eighth inch into your camera and completely bypass the whole K3M um, or if you have any sort of external audio system you could also mount it there and like a, a Zoom H4 or Zoom H6 where you you know send in XLR audio but if you don't even do any of that and you go straight into your camera well then you could completely bypass like the magic arm and I'll completely go over this setup now and show you how and explain my mindset of how I set this up. I absolutely love this setup because I can just wheel it around and uh, while I'm filming, but it's a lot easier when you're not filming and get different angles. So let's just wheel it over here and boom. I'm running into my ceiling fan a little bit and I got a completely different angle in my studio space. So like these are just things that you don't even see really. And, they're kind of boring that's why i usually shoot towards the other end of this room but you know you can do that and i could like roll this out to like my door and go in the other rooms of my house and move this whole entire setup so much easier um and you don't have to be like in the middle of filming and doing it like i was doing it here i'm just kind of giving you showing you an example of how easy it is just to move around for this rolling stand i use a smaller impact one impact makes a super clamp and I use that to clamp it to the actual light stand. And then I attach this extension arm from it that's six inches. The whole benefit for this is I can then attach a pin that is included with the arm and then uh, mount my ball head to it and put my camera system on it. So I put my quick release plate on there. So literally when I'm setting up for my YouTube videos, I just take my camera, snap it on that quick release plate and go. And it's amazing. It's, it's so, convenient just to be able to do that turn my light on and go with that i just got a cheap ball head that i got from some other gear so you don't have to go too crazy in that get whatever you want some people might even want to attach like a a bigger like tripod video tripod head that they really like and you know you, maybe you want to be able to go behind it when you're not shooting this way and shoot b-roll of a prod product and you you know you have it has enough space there to do that or you move it down to fit to your liking you can do that too it's really all modifying this to work for you and as far as the height goes I just sat down in a chair and put everything down as low as this the super clamp it would go. So I knew I had it as low as I needed to do when I'm sitting down. All I have to do when I'm standing up is untighten the middle section, lift the bar up, and everything's already at the perfect height for me. I don't have to adjust anything else. And the only other thing that I really attach to the top is the light and the vice grip arm so I can get those up higher if I need to get them out of the shot or out of the way of this other setup. So I wanna roll this down and just crank those up. So anyway, next in line is the magic arm. You can completely bypass this setup if you're not using an external audio source or if your shotgun goes straight into your camera, then you don't need to buy this at all. But I have the magic arm attached with the adapter that came with my Sony K3M that makes it so that I can just leave it on here at all times and whenever I take my camera on, I just take the little cable that came with the K3M and slide it into the top of the hot shoe. It just makes it really convenient. I just pretty much leave it here all the time. And if I need to take the K3M with me, then I can just take the K3M off, off that adapter and I just leave that adapter on my uh, magic arm at all times. But if I need to take it with me, I can take it with me. That's the thing I like about this setup. It's pretty, I can take it with me if I need to and I can just leave it here when I don't. I kind of angled it so the controls are facing me, but you don't really need to do it that way because I just I just leave it in auto mode all the time. I, I freaking love the auto mode on the K3M. It's just so dang good. Next thing in line, the jaw vice grip. So the reason why you need this is because I need a way to attach the boom arm off to the side I attach the vice grip and then I attach a grip head 
to the vice grip. Tighten that down and then into the grip head, I put my microphone boom arm. And like I said, I, got, I use a just cheap Amazon one. It works great. See, I can do this. And so typically when I'm in my videos, I just get this microphone as close as I can to my mouth. And then I just look at the screen and say, just get out of the shot. And then I, that's why I like about it being on a boom arm. So if I'm further away, I can boom, pull that boom arm closer to me, get good audio as I possibly can get. The rule of thumb is get that microphone as close to your face as you can. And then literally on the top, I just have a grip arm, which I just put the grip head version of the grip arm into the top of the light stand, lock it up, and then I mount to my light at the end of the pole. So my light I use is Aperture uh, Amaran 60D, sorry, 60X. The D is another cheaper option, but I, you know, Kyle was nice and gave me the 60X. Thank you, Kyle. It has a pole mount that you can just slide it through and lock it down on the end of that pole. So that that's it's a great little light. It's not very heavy, so it's really perfect for this setup. I love, love, love it. I I, I would buy it again and, and hands down. It replaced my Falcon Eyes light, and now I'm used to be using like my Falcon Eyes light for B-roll or something until I can get everything converted to this awesome Citus Link app. I'm tired of using like 20 apps on my phone. And the other thing I love about this light is that it's battery powered. So I have the option to wall mount it, but I love this whole setup because it's all on a stand with just battery. And how I'm running the battery is through a Z-Sin V-mount battery that I snapped right to the side of the light. And I got the Condor Blue D-Tap adapter. So it goes into the battery D-Tap and plugs straight into my light. It's a great, great setup. And uh, you know, there's a lot of other adapters that go from DTAP to other lights that have different plugs. So you can check that out if your light doesn't have the same sort of setup there. I love this setup and I really like the battery because it, when you, you have a press a button and it shows you the display and how much charge you have left. It's got uh, USB-C quick charging on it. It's got DTAP um, and then it has another USB-C in and out so it can charge other devices and you can charge it as well. So there's two USB-C's and D-Tap. Uh, it's a great little battery solution and I, I like that z -Sin battery. It, it's been my workhorse and it's been just my dedicated battery for this mobile setup. So g -Sin did a fantastic job with that V-mount battery. I like the bigger one because more battery is great and then I don't have to, I can typically get through like an entire day of shooting and still have plenty of battery left over for this bigger battery. So I don't, I don't have to worry about charging it all the time. I'd usually just, you know, turn myself on, turn it off. And then every few days I might look, just look, tap the button on the screen and see how much battery I have left to see if I need to charge it or not. But love, love, love it. That is really the whole entire setup. I love it because it just rolls around, but this is a perfect talking head setup. I have, I wheel it over to my desk so that it, I can have it there. I can wheel it over in the corner of my room. I can sit, I can stand, I can get on a stool. And I know that it's easy set up just one turn of a knob and adjust the height of this whole entire setup. You really just, man, I love it. I can't go wrong with it. I'd buy it again in a heartbeat. I think it is the best solution for me and for my tiny little YouTube studio here. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and you guys know that I will see you in the future.